Hi everybody, Ellen here. Today I come to you guys with my October TBR and you should just probably call this TBR like the TBR of chunky ass freaking fantasy books that I have put off reading until now because they're so freaking chunky. So, yeah. So I actually have seven books on this TBR, which is a really long time since I had so many books. I usually settle for five because I'm a very much a mood reader and I most often end up not reading the books of my TBR. Well, not all of them, but some at least. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the chunky ass books. So we have The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty and I've heard great things about this book and it's so beautiful and honestly I've been wanting to read this book for such a long time now and I've had it on my TBR on my shelf for like a year I want to say. I don't know if that's accurate but for a really long time at least and I just I want to read it and I've heard great things and the third book is out now so I mean I'm obviously behind. <laughs> um, but in this one takes place in the markets of the 18th century Cairo and there's thieves and tricksters, con artists and outcasts eke out a living, swindling rich nobles and foreign invaders alike. But alongside this new world, the old stories lingered, tales of jinn and spirits, of cities hidden among the swirling sands of the desert, full of enchantment, desire and riches, where magic pours down every street, hanging in the air like dust. Many wish their lives could be filled with wonder, but not Nari. She knows the trade she uses to get by are just tricks and slays of the hand. There's nothing magical about her. She only wishes to one day leave Cairo, but as the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. So, it's a chunk ass book. It's like 526 pages, but I just need to read some fantasy this month because I read a whole lot of <laughs> middle grade in September and I'm going to read a whole lot of middle grade in November so this is the month for fantasy. The next book which I cannot believe I still have not read um, but that is True Life by Jay Kristoff. This is the third book in the Lifelike series. I do believe this is the last book but I'm not sure but I love this series so freaking much. Um, I've read the first book twice and the second book broke my heart. Um, so I'm not sure I'm ready for this, but I really, really need to read it because I think this has been out since like, I want to say June. It's been a couple of months and it's been on my shelf ever since. And I just need to get to it because I know I'll fly through this book because I won't be able to put it down. Because that was happened with the first two books in the series. Um, so in the first book we need, meet this girl called Evie and in the be beginning of the book she's actually at this sort of robot fight kind of thing and at this fight while she's fighting with the robots she accidentally reveals to everybody including herself that she has this sort of ability to like pretty much scream and shut down robots and that's not really normal that's kind of frowned upon she is looked as sort of you know bad news and these people start hunting her and her friends down and she ends up in this sort of junkyard and she finds this lifelike called Ezekiel and a lifelike is basically a robot that looks so lifelike <laughs> that you can't really tell it's a robot until you pretty much cut them open and she brings this lifelike back to her home because she thinks well you know scraps and she goes home to her grandpa Silas and then the bad guys that were hunting her before, they all sort of attack and they try to escape and shit goes down and it's just Evie trying to figure out where she's, where she came from and find out stuff about her family and it's just action packed and it's amazing and I can't believe I haven't read this one yet. But if you haven't picked up the series yet, do you're not going to regret it. Like one of the two books that are not actually ridiculously chunky of this TBR. Um, but that is Anne of Ingleside by Ella Montgomery. This is the sixth book in the series of Anne of Green Gables. I plowed through the first five books a couple of months ago. Absolutely fell in love. And I just love Give Up Life. But that is a big part of <laughs> why I also love the TV show Anne with an E because... Um, but this is the sixth book, like I said, and 
I think everybody knows Ellen of Green Gable is about. I mean, it is a classic, but in the first book, we meet Anne Shirley, and she is 11 years old, and she has been sent for from the orphanage to live with this family, with Marilla and Matthew. Uh, but when she gets there, she quickly learns that they actually asked to take in a boy, but they got sent a girl instead. Uh, but despite this mix-up, they decided to keep Anne and stuff avails. I love this series so so much, definitely one of my favorite classics and I just need to continue on with it because I mean love and also these editions are so freaking gorgeous and I love them uh, and this is source books fire and I believe I'll just fly through this one just like I did that once like back to back. I have a second book that is not a hunker like five out of seven books are hunkers so uh, but that is The Black Flamingo by Dean Ara. This is a contemporary novel and it's actually written in verse and it should be a really quick read, which is what I need after all of these chunky ass books in this TBR. Um, but this one we meet Michael and he is actually um, a drag queen. Uh, nobody really knows about this hobby of his. Uh, so it's just about him trying to find the courage to actually enter the stage and reveal to the world that he is what he is and it sounds really really beautiful and awesome and i've heard great things oh there's also illustrations in it and i just have had this for months and i just i need to read it I actually have one of like my tbr pile of shame but that is outlander by diana gabaldon Gabal gabaldon <sighs> struggles i'm sorry for butchering that um but this is a a historical fiction book it's the first book in you know the series called outlander i still haven't watched the tv show but i really much want to um i started reading this one during vacation in 2017 uh, i think it was june so it's been over three years and i haven't picked it up since i got to page 252 and then vacation ended and i just didn't pick it up again because it's huge it's over 800 pages and it scares the living bejesus out of me um, but I did really enjoy what I have read so far, so I really do want to pick this one up again and hopefully, you know, finish it this time. But this one takes place in 1946 and we meet Claire Randall and she goes to the Scottish Highlands with her husband Frank. It's sort of a second honeymoon. Uh, but then, like, everything out of chance end up changing because Claire actually goes through this sort of stand, a circle of standing stones and she vanishes into 1743 where the first person she meets is a British army officer and her husband's six times great grandfather. Uh, but unfortunately Black Jack Randall is not the man his descendant in, is uh, and Claire uh, falls into the hands of a gang of Scottish outlaws and finds herself a Sashnak, which is an outlander in the danger from both Jacobites and Redcoats. And, you know, ergo, uh, J.B. Fraser, who I think everybody's heard of at this point because everybody seems to love him. And to the point where I've gotten, we've definitely been introduced to him. Uh, but yeah, I am really enjoying what I've read so far and I just need to pick it up. And I feel like I remember some things from the past three years of reading this, but a beautiful book that I feel like everybody has read by now except me uh, but this is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern this is from the same author that wrote um, The Night Circus which I thought was kind of okay but I didn't love it um, but I really have ho high expectations for this one um, so in this one we meet uh, Zachary and he sort of stumbles upon this really a strange book in the university library and it leads him on a quest like no other and the weird thing about this book he finds is the fact that it's a recollection from his own childhood and he wants to know how the hell is his life written in a book in the library so he has to solve the puzzle of the book and to do that he needs to find the clues he finds on the cover which is a bee a key and a sword and they all guide him to a masquerade ball uh, to a dangerous secret club and finally through a magical doorway created by the fierce and mysterious Mirabel. And it's sort of a libra libra labyrinth, library, labyrinth, and it threatens Zachary and everyone he holds there. And I've heard quite a good, um, quite a lot of good things about this book. It's not, not too, too chunky, it's like 480 something pages. 
so it's not even 500 pages, it just looks enormous. But it sounds sort of this magical and mystical kind of read. And although I didn't love Night Circus, I did like the way it was written. Uh, it was just too maybe like, I don't even know. <laughs> but just some aspects of it that I didn't really love that much. So I have high hopes for this one, but at the same time, I'm kind of skeptical and scared. But I do feel like I would enjoy this one because I feel it giving me a little bit of strange the dreamer, Lady Taylor kind of vibes with this one. I might possibly probably be wrong, but that, that's just what I'm thinking so far when I haven't picked it up, but I will, I will. And then the last book on this TBR and therefore the last hunger, and that is The Poppy War by RF Kuang. I've had this book on my TBR for maybe like two years. I don't know, it's a really long time and I feel like everybody has read this by now or currently reading it, still somewhat popular on booktube. It's really big. I do own the second book as well now so I really hope I like this one because these are not like cheap <laughs> um, and I don't really remember what it's about so I have to read it. Opium runs through the heart of the Nikara Empire, a constant reminder of the war with the Federation of Mugen that brought it to the Empire's shores. A war that only ended thanks to three heroes, the Vipress, the Dragon Emperor, and the Gatekeeper, known as the Trifecta. They were legendary figures, each bestowed with godlike powers, who united the warlords of the Empire against the Federation. Decades have passed, the Trifecta is shattered, the Dragon Emperor is dead, the Gatekeeper is missing, and the Vipress alone sits on the throne as, at Sindgard. Peace reigns, yet the poppy remains. From Fang Runen grew up with it, he adopted the family snuggles, uh, her adopted family smuggles it throughout Rooster Province, making a living on the most on the misfortunate of those addicted to its smoke. When Rin's parents force her into an arranged marriage, Rin refuses to accept her fate and fights her way to the prestigious military academy at Sangar. There she will learn of drug fueled shaman shamanic powers thought to be myth. Powers which might defeat the Federation during its third invasion, but the cost of some power is too great to pay, even if it means winning a war that threatens to destroy an entire nation. It sounds really cool. I like the aspect of like a military ac academy. So I really need to pick this one up once and for all. <laughs> yeah, those were the seven books I hope to read this month. Um, it's definitely ch more chunky books and more books in general on my TBR because I usually stick to like five somewhat less chunky books. Um, but I do hope to get to all of these or hopefully at least some of them. I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you've read any of these books, please let me know down below what you thought about them without spoiling, of course. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give me some thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button down below. And yeah, I hope we see each other in the next one. Bye!